Hello, hey guys. Um, I think in two minutes it's going to start uh, next match of the Crazy House Team League. Um, let me show quickly. It's the second match uh, in our uh, for our team. Uh, first match went uh, 2-0 in our favor, but we play against arguably the, the strongest team. Uh, at least from from what we saw in round one, we're in round two, and and we're playing this team Sira Horo, and uh, yeah, first first uh, pairing w was great. Charlie Horse managed to win 2-0, and now we're gonna see James uh, playing against P K PKR PKR. Uh, it seems that uh, PKR is highly rated compared to James. Same will happen in my match, and same will happen in some other matches. <laughs> so yeah, this is going to be a tough, a tough round for us. But so far, it's going well. Um, so let's see if I'm following. No, let's keep that open just in case we need to. Okay, uh, let's uh, follow James who's still not playing so I'm gonna hit the watch games James O'Grady my teammate is from Ireland according to Liches according to what he said <laughs> to Liches um, the lightning is a bit strange give me a second let's not break everything Tiny, tiny bit better this way, I think. All right, and as as usual, let me put this more like that. As usual, I'm uh, recording this, and then I will publish it. I will upload the video, so there's no no chance to to any cheating. And I think it just is loading something. Maybe they're starting right now. It's time now, and yeah, they're very. They start right in time. So let me fix the layout. Uh, I'm gonna try and show a bigger board. So first game, uh, James is white. And. They already have played one game before, as you can see there, and maybe you can see it. Give me a second, I'm trying to fix the layout a bit. I'm gonna do my face really small, I don't think you, you really need to see my face big. Um, yeah, so they're playing very fast, the opening, I, I guess maybe both in preparation what happened here i'm a bit confused so the time control is eight plus eight because they're five six seven eight they're board number four as you know in the league five plus five for the first board six plus six the second seven plus seven the third board that's going to be me tomorrow and eight plus eight in this board number four and they played so fast until here let's see what happened so e4 was played knight f6, Aliyahin defense, um, knight c3, d5. This is all very common. And here usually uh, I've seen e takes d5 a lot. I've played e takes d5 with white, although I don't usually play knight c3, but sometimes I did. And with black I, I, I faced e takes d5 a lot, but e5 not so commonly. And, and then after d4 I guess yeah, it's more or less forced. Really interesting. Uh, of course, there's alternatives for white, but if white pushed to e5, he wants to take here. Takes, takes on g7, takes on d2, takes with bishop, takes g7. And now, after a thought, James decided to sacrifice the b2 pawn and put a pawn already on h6. And this is the current position. Um, uh, it's, it's really dangerous uh, for black because, for example, why could drop a pawn here and that can be always annoying um, yeah rook b1 seems more 
conservative but what about just pawn here I mean I don't think there's something particularly wrong with that because rooks are useful under certain circumstances but I'm not sure how useful a rook is for black in hand here although he also has three pawns and a knight yeah some material there but I don't see anything clear after pawn at g7 bishop takes a1 queen takes a1 then rook g8 maybe or well there's the other option after pawn at here bishop takes taking the rook bishop takes so we traded rooks so we have rook at g8 that's also to be considered and maybe some knight at g7 then and if bishop takes pawn takes interesting i i guess james calculated some of that when he put the pawn h6 because he took some some time for that and now sorry this is not the current position rook b1 has been played and knight at c3 which is a bit annoying i have to say i guess now we need to go all in knight at g7 is possible uh, moving the queen out is possible too taking on c3 seems probably losing or not actually if queen takes rook takes it seems risky <laughs> to take here and allow black to have a certain attack but okay you have to calculate you have time you have to calculate bishop takes c3 he can either trade queens or take on c3 he can take on c3 first or after queen trade so he took there <laughs> that's scary <laughs> so what's going on now well i guess the best move for black should be bishop takes because after the queen trade actually no maybe the queen trade is also fine so i guess white is gonna block with a pawn here uh here or after the queen trade and and he might have thought that this is perfectly fine and it might be perfectly fine i was maybe scared of of nothing or maybe um uh, bishop takes d2 or or even queen takes d2 yeah ay 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 a queen trade and the king getting exposed you you gotta calculate those it's it's always unpleasant when when your king gets ex extracted and with checks and your opponent has material in hand and he has definitely a lot of diagonal pieces so queen takes d2 or bishop takes d2 probably queen takes is a bit more forcing because there's no way out after bishop takes there's the additional option of king e2 although it's probably bad one hmm. yeah it feels risky for for white's king um, it's usually a bit more uncomfortable if if black had a knight for example but still a lot of diagonals so i'm expecting after queen takes queen takes king takes just dropping pawn at c3 probably very fast pawn at c3 now makes sense there's a bishop check from this diagonal but i'm expecting pawn, pawn at c3 and yeah white skin might be might might be checkmated Poof. Pong at c3, pong at d4, you're gonna sack, you have four pawns in hand and a bishop. Um, and the king has no safe place. Maybe maybe after pong at c3, we can try king e2. Feels a bit risky because queen at d2. Ah, no, bishop g4 wins on the spot. Yeah. No, so we have to take it. And. Yeah. I expected pawn at c3 faster because once you take on d2 okay let's see i don't like how how this position looks is this going to be a a running active king that that is going to survive or is this going to be lost pawn at c3 seems so logical so he starts with a check on that diagonal um well i don't think it changes much but i would drop a bishop at e3 probably uh because there's no 
good king move, right? Yeah. And now maybe pawn at c3. I don't know how that improves uh, black's attack, honestly, because now after, after king takes c3, maybe pong, dropping at, at d4 is not ideal, because now we have control there. So I'm not sure what was bishop at g5. Maybe it's actually a chance for for white now. Still dangerous. But now at least we have control over these two squares. So if, if he drops a pawn here, then we'll need, he will need some some more power. Still dangerous. Still bishop at f6, bishop at a5. There's, and lots of places to drop the queen as well. Hmm. In general, I would try to block if if a check comes from afar, like with the king on c3, a check comes from like bishop at f6. I would try to block on d4, of course, or now on d4. I would try to block with bishops or maybe queen, bishop d3 here. I wouldn't give a different piece. I wouldn't block with a knight because that gives additional options to the attacker to have a different piece in hand, in this case a knight. So I would probably play bishop d3 or bishop at d4. Bishop at d4 makes sense, I guess. And we always have knight at g7 and some some resource. I'm not sure what's black doing, <laughs> to be honest. Maybe, maybe I'm drunk, but uh, the last three moves or at least the, the move number 12, bishop at g5, and this move queen at d6. I'm not sure, uh, I'm not really sure how's that attack working. Maybe I missed the stuff, it's very likely. I cannot, this is not an, an analysis board, so I cannot drop pawn here, but if I drop pawn here, I think taking is forced because queen at d2 is threatened and the only way to to not allow queen at d2 being made is either go here but then bishop g4 and queen at d2 is going to be made or king up but you don't want to run up queen at d2 probably killing so after pawn c3 you have to take pawn at d4 and i think you have to take and then probably just c5 or e5 or pawn at c5 pawn at he has Four pawns and a bishop in hand. And anytime you don't take a pawn, like dropping here, we don't take it, then he can drop queen on c3. I mean, poof. Okay, maybe I missed some specific line, but. So after this, he blocked finally with bishop on d4, which I like. And now knight at g7 might be an option at some point. Uh, also, we have two knights, so maybe knight at c4, knight at e4 are interesting ideas. I think black ruined a bit the attack um, they had, and now black's low on time as well. So, so I'm starting to like the position again. Hmm, what can black do? If black goes for the material, for example c5, e5, pawn at c5, pawn at e5, it might be too slow. We have ways to threaten the queen, we have ways to check. This position is suddenly not so easy for, for black. So what was really strange for me was this moment. I mean, I think black is perfectly fine here. And if black decides to go here, which I think is correct, <laughs> I think the only justification is to keep extracting the king with pawn at c3. I don't understand. Why would you take on d2 and not do that? But black was perfectly fine. This, this was a very critical moment. Knight at c3, I think... Black had good perspectives here. 
And I'm not sure whether c3 is winning or not, but it, it looks winning. And now pawn at e5, okay. And now it's James' turn to decide how to do this. But knight at c4 seems to to eliminate that problem. So knight at c4 covers any check from a5 as well. Maybe PK, PKR, <laughs> tough nickname. Maybe PKR is trying to invite James to drop a knight <laughs> on the board and somehow have a clever way to trade stuff so he takes the knight. But right now, I don't think that there's anything wrong with knight at c4 and knight takes e5 next move. So knight at c4, bishop at b4 check. C3, bishop takes c3, king takes c3. I don't see anything there. Pawn takes e5 check, pawn takes uh, at d4, I mean. Pawn takes d4. Black is not gonna sack the queen. Okay, it's always scary when you have the king there, but but I don't see any any danger. Also, after bishop at b4, I mean, if we go knight at c4, bishop at b4 check, we might even play, I don't know, let's say king e2 or king d1, king e2. Maybe I'm missing something, but like bishop at b5. Then rook takes b4. Okay, that's complicated. Hmm. Well, we could even play uh, rook takes b4. <laughs> so knight at c4, bishop at b4, rook takes b4, queen takes b4, check, bishop, because now we have an extra bishop in hand, bishop at c3, or even just the bishop from d4 to c3. And that position has to be good, although, no, we didn't lose the knight. Why on e4 and not on c4? Maybe he wants to control this to, to be sure to regain with knight if bishop at b4, bishop takes c3 happens. I don't know. <coughs> Sorry. Sorry. Um, okay, it was a bit strange but still annoying for black because now the queen is hanging and the queen was pinning this bishop so so this move pawn at e5 was annoying. So if the queen wants to keep that, queen needs to go here but then there's knight at f6 and that's probably James' point that he's removing this square from from, from the queen's options. Same happens here. And queen at d8 is a very, very sad move you don't want to do, in general. Uh, and then maybe queen at g7 might threaten knight at f6 again. So, okay, I guess his idea is to play against this queen, because now queen d5 allows knight at f6. Uh, bishop at b4 check, though. I mean, I like white's position, don't get me wrong, but I'm trying to find what could be good for black here. Pong at c3, distracting the knight. Pong at c3, it's still interesting. Trying to distract the knight or the king to a worst square. Oh, queen e6. Okay, no longer pinned, but still defending this pawn. But there's knight at g7, right? Knight at g7 should be good enough. If we take a second, yeah, and James saw. Okay. King d7 would have prevented this to be a check. Okay, this this is looking really good for for James. Now let's not blunder stuff because the king is still a bit exposed and PKR has oh look at that uh, PKR has um, some some stuff in hand. But I think James 
has everything under control to be honest bishop takes e5 seems natural there's a check here but we can always trade uh, there are checks here but I guess we can block now we only have two queens in hand so it's really nice to take a pawn to have a blocker for for those checks probably like bishop at, f, at a h5 check just pawn at c3 or c3 also yeah bishop takes seems natural but maybe he's trying to to find a kill i mean he has okay no, he played it uh hits that hits this because there might be some sacrifice for for the attack now um this is hanging as well uh, this is looking really good really good for james now um it was a really strange game to be honest uh very weird decisions by black or or maybe i'm not understanding a lot of things <laughs> all right um I guess many moves wing. Pong at here, pawn at g7, sorry. Could be interesting. Queen at g7 as well. But he goes for the attack immediately. I like it. I like that as long as it works. So pawn at here could be interesting because after takes this queen at e7. And there's no blocker that can defend d6. So pawn at d6 check. If takes queen at e7 check followed by queen at e7, sorry. Followed by queen takes d6 check that seems good um, there's of course this crazy idea because the knight can jump and he goes for that okay he goes for the craziest idea <laughs> still a good one I guess I guess he, he will have drop here and then uh, he might sacrifice the knight but a bishop would be handy for the checkmate so I'm not sure I'm not sure about the knight sacrifice now. So king c6 I would play. I mean, as black, you're getting checkmated. So either you trust a lot <laughs> in this bishop defending this and I don't trust it. Or you, you go attack the knight. Black has a lot of pieces in hand. So this attack better work. Um, black is in time travel. That could be also problem. Ah, this queen at b5. We don't need to sacrifice the knight. Queen at b5. It's much easier okay he sacrifices the knight ah but we have another queen in hand so queen queen at d4 is checkmate i i forgot we had two queens okay so so this attack of course is totally working for for james it's checkmate next move if king here queen at c7 is checkmate if king takes queen at d4 is checkmate or queen at b4 yeah it's checkmate next move queen at c7 is checkmate now and I'm expecting James to do it. No, okay. <laughs> but he saw a mate, he saw a mate. He saw queen at f4, I think. Queen at f4 now. Yes. All right. Um, a wing is a wing. You, you don't need to find the best sequence as long as you find a checkmate. Okay, well, that was that was good. I didn't like the opening at the first moment, but then it turned out well. I think black might have a chance to win, actually, in that game. Okay, so we have e4, e5. This is the second game. James is black. This typical opening at the knight f6, I'm expecting now. Uh, there's the line with bishop f7 or just knight c3. Yeah, bishop f7, I, I, I like to play it a lot against Joey. And then pong at d5. It's nothing special for white, but it's active. Okay, and here h6 prevents bishop g5, uh, but allows that. And now, of course, that pawn will be dropped at g6 because of this weakness on f7. Uh, still, I believe we have to take it because, yeah, and now pong at g6, I'm expecting. And okay. Now it gets tricky. This is a lot of pressure, maybe, on the light squares. 
I'm not usually very comfortable when, when my opponents do stuff like that. I would tend to think of moves like bishop at e6 now, try to to counter, uh, I mean, the two pieces that are annoying us. So maybe bishop at e6, but I don't know. I'm not a good defender in general. Um, hmm. No easy counterattack, though. At least pawn, bishop at here fights against this pawn takes idea. I think both both ideas, bishop takes and pawn takes, are on white's agenda. Okay, James is taking his time. He probably didn't expect bishop takes h6 followed by g6. It's a very common theme, but first time I fell for it, it was a surprise for me as well. Actually, I didn't fall for it. First time I saw, I think it was on a chess game analysis, on a crazy house game analysis with OK. And OK told this idea. Um, I think I was analyzing one of my games. And he said, oh, I, I would do this. I would take on... I would take on h3 and go pawn at g3. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. So bishop at e8, a bit more passive than bishop at e6. I'm not sure what's wrong with bishop at e6. But <laughs> I can tell you what's wrong with bishop at e8. Or what I don't like. Is I don't think... Okay, they're moving fast, so I don't want to distract you from what's happening now black is re trying to remove all the pawns around uh, white is trying to remove all the pawns around black's king but let's go back for a moment what i don't like about bishop e8 is yes it defends but it's not doing anything active or not solving any problems the ping is still a ping so i think if i was white i would continue building pressure maybe queen d2 attacking this maybe Try, try to make this work, May, maybe bring the knight somewhere. Um, because we're not breaking the ping, we can't do anything about about this problem in the next move, and we don't have more pieces to drop. So I would have put on, on e6, because that way we would threaten something, and we would force probably to what happened, g takes f7. But g takes f7 wasn't forced. I think white could take the time that, okay, I'm pinning you, you're passive, I'm gonna keep building because you don't have anything to drop, you don't have any way to to untie that. But okay, he traded anyway, he went for, for activity and I like this move, knight g4, going for, for the counter attack, it's usually a good idea and crazy has, and white takes on h6. So this is interesting, uh, it would be nice if there was a way to remove this knight to have access to h4, the problem is if he takes with pawn, he will attack our knight. Will he take with pawn, though? Maybe he takes... Ooh, okay. <laughs> Completely different idea. I was thinking, in, my, in the back of my mind, I was thinking about distracting that knight as well. But the problem is this knight is hanging. But okay, he goes for bishop takes f2, which is really, really interesting idea. Now, if rook takes f2, there could be bishop at e3. I think that's probably what I would do. Bishop at e3, if rook takes. Um... And if king h1, maybe rook takes is an option. Okay, so bishop at e3 is possible, but of course you can take as well. It hits the queen, cannot be the worst. You you have two pawns also, so, so maybe even dropping a pawn to the, then drop a pawn at f2. So we don't really need to take the rook. I don't think the rook is particularly interesting for the attack yet i mean i think the knight is much more annoying so giving the knight for the rook i'm not i'm not sure i'm not sure but okay as i said it attacks the queen it cannot be the worst move but now the knight was really great on g4 for the attack i think yeah i would have gone bishop at e3 i think probably or Pong at e3. And then there could be some crazy ideas like Pong at g3, but... Okay, now this is the current position and how to continue the attack. Both kings are a bit exposed. 
I think black skin seems a bit more exposed. Uh, no, no pond shelter, no black ponds here, and also there's a an opponent's pond here, annoying a bit. So I think this king is a bit weaker than this, but it's black's turn to move, and we have some checks, like for example bishop here or pawn here. Maybe he's calculating something like that. Pawn here, and after takes bishop here, or pawn, also pawn. Yeah, okay, that's a good combination. Pawn here, because we at least regain material with pawn on d4. Yeah, he goes for that. Okay, that makes that makes sense. That could justify if knight takes f2, actually. So now white has to make a choice. Maybe white wants to go back and if bishop or pawn at f2 go to the corner is that a safe king or not the problem for black in that kind of line is we don't have knights and we can take one on f3 but it's not the best knight ever because if we take it uh, our king is so exposed and white will have a rook in hand we, we need to be really careful like rook here followed by knight here could be could be checkmate so i don't think we can give the rook for the knight so easily. Um, however, here, almost there, it's almost there. Bishop at g4 makes sense. We don't need to give the rook, but the knight is the only thing stopping rook at g1 right now, or rook at, at, at t1. He goes there anyway. Wow. Because he wants to take the queen after, aha, so after takes takes, he might have thought he will take with the queen and not with the king. So have a look at that, I'm not sure how that works. If queen takes knight out f2, he has to give the queen. But if king takes, we have bishop out f2, but is that enough? Bishop out f2, king back to the corner. Wow, he sacrifices the queen though to bring the... That didn't make a lot of sense, but he didn't want to give the knight, so there's no smothered mate. But did I miss a smother? I, I don't think there was a smothered mate. Maybe, maybe there was. <laughs> I, I don't know. Did I miss? If you take with knight at g1, then the queen defends f2. So yes, you have to give the queen, but... And if you take with king, there's no smothered mate, not at all. Okay, anyway, uh, so he gave the queen, which is interesting, but on the other hand, okay, I think I'm so tempted to do this, but not sure if I have to be scared of this one. And also everything that white can drop. White has rook, so rook at g can be an option, rook at g3, for example. Yeah, it's not so easy now. <laughs> White's king is actually safe. Oops, sorry. Um, safer than blacks. Um, how about bishop at g4? Bishop at g4, if rook at g5, we cannot sacrifice. I mean, I'd love to collect a knight <laughs> right now. But how to do it? Knight takes a uh, rook takes f3 seems probably suicidal. Hmm. Bishop at f2 is another option. I mean, we can play, try to play safe. Black has like a good position and a queen in hand and some checkmate ideas if we grab a knight. But on the other hand, we only have to, you know, queen and bishop to drop. Queen f6. Hmm. And white has a lot of pieces to drop, especially two bishops and one rook. Those are the most annoying. Although the knight is also. And that queen can be hit by any number of moves now. Bishop is here. There's rook checks. Uh, even rook check here could be interesting. Sacrifice a pawn for the activity and the attack and exposing this king. Yeah. 
I wouldn't be surprised if this is a great position for white. But maybe for, for, you never know, I'm not so good at Crazy House and sometimes a position seems so good and there's just a tactical motive that changes completely the evaluation, like there's a way that black can take a knight and checkmate and, and then the evaluation changes completely. I don't know, I'm, I'm worried, I'm worried about this position, it seems like white's king is not in danger, not in immediate danger and white can just build up slowly he has many many pieces to drop so he starts by dropping a bishop at f5 that's certainly annoying uh, it's threatening rook at g6 check i think that's the main threat but of course the bishop also controls h7 so h7 is an idea or pawn at h7 or bishop at h7 or a knight at h7 but yeah main threat is Rook at g6, of course. Mm, not easy. <laughs> not easy now. Bishop at h7, maybe. Maybe it's time to play defensively. Bishop at h7 could be an option. Or bishop at h5. At least mm, try not just to defend this, but also attack something. Although, yeah, in general, we don't want to open the g file, but. At some point we need to attack something. Uh, that allows rook at g6 and I think pkr probably will play it fast because I think his previous move was to threaten that. No, he goes for pawn at h7. I don't think rook at g6 was any, any bad for white. Um, but yeah, okay, this is actually a strong move as well, because if you take, he's going to take with check. If you don't take, rook at g8 will happen. So if you don't take, you have to go king f8. And still, rook at g8 will be... will be probably a checkmate net, a main net or something. So rook takes, bishop takes... And there's no king h8 because of knight at f7. Okay, this is not looking good now. Rook at g8, king e7 only move, knight d5 checkmate. Ah oh, no, it's not checkmate, there's there's king d6. But ah, then bishop at c5 check. So it's checkmate in two now. King e7, bishop at c5 check, no matter what you block with, yeah, and he, he saw. If you block or you go here, knight e5 is made. He actually might have pre-moved knight e5 already. Against any legal move, knight e5 is checkmate now. Okay, that was that was a pity. But it's a good score anyway. 1-1. One, one. Yeah, 95 is checkmate. Okay. Um, well, I don't know if I can analyze the games. Maybe. Let's start with this one. I think in, in general I want to do these live sessions uh, instead of analysis after the game because uh, I think for me it's, it's more instructive to see what what do I think with the same timing as the, the players and you know afterwards with time and and help you can see much more but and do deeper analysis but okay let's have a look at what the database suggests uh, this opening was very normal it was all normal so d3 is the main move here, knight c3 is also very common, castle, it's all very standard, d3, d6 is the main move, but he played h6. So here, according to the database, 27,000 games, almost 28,000 games with d6, and only 
8000 with h6 so h6 is also very very normal but yeah the thing of h6 is it weakens uh, g6 right and that's what happened in in the game actually he went immediately for for bishop takes h6 which is the third move in the database it's it's been played a lot so it makes sense so yeah maybe this is the first point where the game had uh, maybe this was the first interesting moment let's say h6 and white played very fast h uh, bishop takes h6 so so he's totally aware of this idea um d6 would have been normal but the problem with d6 is it it, it blocks this retreat so then bishop g5 usually is usually annoying and of course the purpose of of h6 is to prevent that i don't know uh third move in the database is bishop e7 and if i'm not familiar with this opening i might have considered to go bishop e7 here for you know for the sake of safety but still h6 should be should be playable it's, it's a main move bishop takes h6 g takes h6 pawn g6 this is uh, According to the database, of course, what people play. Oh, let me see. I have some messages. <laughs> okay, um, sorry. Sorry, guys. Um, Okay, so pawn at g6, um, and now, yeah, main move according to the database here is bishop at e6. So I'm going to use only the database, I'm not going to use the engine for a couple of reasons. First of all, I don't like it. <laughs> and then, also, but not important, sometimes the stream crashes when, when, when I turn the engine, so let's not try. Although, on the other hand, I'm not streaming, I'm recording only, so maybe it works, but I will not do it anyway. Uh, so I will not see engine moves, I will, and it would be nice to count on stronger people for a better analysis, but this is what you got, guys. <laughs> you got me. So <laughs> I'm gonna just comment do comments from my, from my level. And yeah, I said bishop at e6 was what I would have played here and it is the main move in the database. Sometimes being the first move in the database doesn't mean that it is a strong move, it's just the most natural. And I think bishop at e6 is the most natural. Yeah, there's actually another move, the second move in the database. So bishop at e6, around 1000 games. And the second move, and I did not even think about it, is bishop at h5 with 350 occurrences in the database uh, and it's very common in crazy house to do this kind of moves uh, both attacking and defending so yeah bishop at e6 i think probably much better than bishop at e8 bishop at e8 is 15 games only and good score for white big score for white still i think after what happened in the game which was g takes f7 we're gonna probably transpose to, to the lines bishop at h5 and bishop at e6 if white plays g takes f7 so we're probably gonna transpose anyway but uh, i think we were lucky that 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 white took on g on f7 although in the database the other move is knight d5 hmm, interesting not a knight h4 i mean knight h4 was tempting all right, so g takes f7, bishop takes, bishop takes, and yeah, we transpose back because we were like 13 games in the database, and after bishop takes, bishop takes, rook takes, we have, with rook takes, we have almost 600 games in the database, so we transpose back to, to sort of the main lines. And here, interestingly enough, what pkr played is the first move in the database pawn at g5 second move which is pawn g6 is very logical too but yeah he played the first 
which is pawn g5. So maybe he knew this because he's back on the main line of the bishop takes h6 um, opening. Or maybe it's just very natural to play pawn g5. I think it is. Okay, and now this is the moment where um, James played knight g4, which I said I liked because you know you 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 start you stop defending and you start counter attacking. So I liked knight g4 attacking f2. That was a good idea. Uh, main move, however, in this position, according to the database, is pawn at h3, which is <laughs> which is really interesting. Uh, a whole sacrifice and the idea is well in, in the database main move is g takes h3 not pawn takes on f6 so what happens after pawn takes on f6 of course we take on g2 and now it turns out that white has no checks has knight and bishop in hand and black has this nasty thread maybe not sure how nasty it is but then if, if something takes on f6, we're going to hit also these guys over here because the knight lost some defense. So that's interesting. The database people take on g2 and queen takes f6 with some pressure there, knight e5. And queen takes f3, bam, because we take a knight, so we have knight at h4. So queen takes, knight at h4. Ah, no, no knight at h4 here. Both games in the database continued with rook takes. I think I would go knight at h4, probably. 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 Not sure. Okay. Um, so, that was an interesting line. Um, let's see... Let's see what happened after knight g4. Knight g4 has been played also sometimes. Oh, we have now the computer analysis. Okay, some of the players requested computer analysis. Wow, this is amazing. <laughs> so James, Hook, I mean, the the computer analysis shows that James. Uh, oh no, the computer is still running. Okay, 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 okay. Now, now blunders. The number of blunders is increasing. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> so I thought they were both too too precise. Now the computer analysis is going on. Let me. Yeah. Okay. Now it's yeah all all whites except after bishop takes h6. Bishop takes h6 seems to have been a, a mistake. Oh, the computer analysis is a bit strange. What? Okay, never mind. So where are we? <laughs> where is knight g4? Here, okay. So knight g4, computer thinks it's a blunder, but in the database has been played several times. It favors white, though. Um, best move was pawn at h3. And g takes h6 wasn't the best move. According to the engine, bishop at h5 was. Aha, uh -huh. that's a nasty fork. That's a nasty little fork because bishop takes rook is check. So bishop takes f2, probably just king h1. I don't know. Yeah, okay, that was tough to see. And after g takes h6, computer thinks this is back to equal. Bishop takes f2, interesting. Uh, this is still in the database, but main move is knight takes h6 here. Main move, I'm talking about five games in the database, so... <laughs> okay. Uh, bishop takes f2 has been played only once. Uh, now twice. But this is, this is interesting to note. Uh, the other game in the database with this position has been played in the white side by PKR by James' opponent, so he's definitely in his repertoire here. And the other game continued, rook takes f2, so so did this. And yeah, in the other game, bishop at e3 has been played, which which I said it was probably the most logical move. So, 
bishop at e3. That game continued with bishop at h4 counterattack. And and that game continued with knight takes f2, not bishop takes but knight takes, which is funny. Bishop takes, bishop takes. And in the, so this is similar to the game actually. Right? Uh, okay, the difference is um, uh, an additional pair of bishops were traded here because of bishop at h4, bishop at e3, and the trade. <laughs> but the outcome is very similar. I think in the game they had this exact position, but just one, one less bishop in hand, each of them. And then e3 happened anyway. And yeah, in that game, PKR also played king g1. And after pawn at f2, king h1. King h1. And then rook at g1 was played in that game. Wow. So I'm following a game that that is really, really very similar. And in that game, he took with the queen as well. And rook takes, yeah. Ah, in that game, black played rook takes f3, which seems... Oh, look at this. Not, not the discovered check, but rook and knight, yeah. And I, I specifically said this. If this rook ever moves, there could be rook, rook at g7, knight, knight at g6. Yeah. Wow. Look at that. <laughs> and in that game, he continued with bishop at g3, which I'm not sure. Ah, he wants to take a pawn, maybe. So that game continued, pawn at f4. No, maybe it didn't continue like that. Or maybe the game is finished after that. Okay, anyway, so so that was what happened in that game between PKR, PKR and Devowir. And it's very similar to what happened in this game with James. Because in this position, James took the rook. With knight takes f2. And yeah, and now king takes f2 according to the analysis is a blunder. And yeah, I think it's strange. In general, if you're not forced, you don't take that. Like, you, you can start attacking already. But okay, he took. And now, amazingly, according to the database, there's queen h4 as well as pawn at e3. But according to the engine analysis, bishop at b6 was clear advantage for black. Strange. But okay, it's true that with pawn at e3, the king could escape here, and with bishop here, he can escape to g1. But let's see how the game could have continued. Is the idea to sacrifice the bishop? Ah, maybe just queen h4. Hmm. Well, at least, at least we could, we could take this pawn, right? With or without sacrificing on e3 first. Okay, interesting. Bishop at b6, interesting. But pawn at e3 makes, makes definitely sense. The problem is the king runs. Mm -hmm. And now pawn rf2 was a mistake, according to to the engine analysis. But the engine analysis says this is plus six already, so doesn't really matter. Yeah, so this position is is already hopeless for for black. I didn't expect rook at g1 though. 
was considering something can't remember what I said here uh, ah, bishop at g4 I think was my proposal maybe bishop at h5 with the same idea okay but yeah position was already suspicious aha uh -huh. well definitely definitely mm, PKR was really prepared in this line and and yeah this was checkmating nine according to the to the engine but was da, da, da. okay the engine is not giving the line I mean I, I'm not turn, I didn't turn the engine on I'm just seeing the the comments by the analysis they they run I would have gone here look at g6 I think that was the obvious but okay he went pawn, pawn at h7 and now king f8 blunder because checkmate is now unavoidable but yeah this is checkmate in three and this it says checkmate in ten so yeah whatever yeah of course you have to take here but the problem is white has so many pieces in hand king h8 knight f at f7 or even rook rook at g8 yeah everything wins here it's a pity but yeah look how exposed black skin uh, is after after this thing that happened on g6 f7 in the opening okay uh can we see the other game let's go watch the other game a bit and enjoy the victory at least in the other game uh, which was a really strange game so I, I, I really I'm really curious to to put some lines on the board in this game because at some point I thought black was totally winning and I see the computer analysis here and it says Uh -huh. Okay, after king takes d2, I see with bishop at g5, it goes from minus 25 <laughs> to minus 9. So maybe we'll, we'll get there. Maybe pawn at c3 was the winning move. And then still winning for black, still winning for black, until queen at d6 check, which was bad. But then bishop at d4 wasn't the best. I thought it well. It, it was my suggestion too. And then pawn at e5 was bad, and then the answer knight at e4 wasn't the best. Let's see if knight at c4 was. Aha. Uh -huh. And then from that point on, after queen e6, it's all white's advantage. So crazy game here. Let's let's have a look. So e4 was played. Knight f6. Uh, Ali in defense. Knight c3. D5. Yeah. And the normal move here is e takes d5 almost 25,000 games in the database but e5 has almost 8,000 games also it's okay gotta respect that <laughs> and uh, d4 uh, that's the third most common move in the database and now everybody plays e takes f6 d takes c3 f takes g7 c takes d2 so i'm sure they already played I mean, if if uh, James plays e5 against this Aliyahin setup, uh, and the other guy plays the Aliyahin and played d4 fast as well, I'm sure they they both had this many times already in previous games, so that's why they played so fast. And here, after Bishop takes g7, James took some time to 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 come up with pawn at h6, right? And that was strange. I mean, if you had this position already several times, uh, it's a strange that you take time, and then it's a strange that you play pawn at h6, because pawn at h6 is really, I mean, it's it's interesting. Don't get me wrong, but bishop takes b2. You have to to see what to do there. Um, the database suggests c3 here. 
or Pong at C3 and the engine analysis and the third option in the database is Knight F3 which is tricky I mean it's developing but it's another way to to give the B2 Pong and now uh, we have Pong at C3 or Knight at C3 in the da I'm following the database now people take this people take well, uh, two moves are there so this is similar to the game but with this instead of a pawn on h6 on H okay I guess it wouldn't change much okay in the game pawn at h6 which is really interesting but after bishop takes b2 we have games in the database by the way uh, most games in the database shows knight at g7 here and my suggestion, which which was pawn at g7, is second with seven games, and rook b1 has been played only two games, all with black winning. Uh, pawn at g7 also <laughs> every game black wins. Only knight at g7 has white win. Um, some games were white wins. So let's see for for a second the main line knight at g7, and yeah, people take on g7, but. Okay, I, ca I can understand why bishop takes pawn takes can be good for white. It feels that way. What I would be curious about is king f8. And people play rook b1 or bishop d3 here. I think bishop d3 is really interesting. I mean, I don't really care about bishop takes a1. I don't think I should. So let's see these games with bishop d3. Knight c6 or pawn at h3, <laughs> pawn at h3, so people don't care about the rook as well. Okay, this is an interesting position, but I think this this uh, white king is much safer than blacks, so I would like it probably. So let's see what happens. Bishop takes b2, rook b1. Uh, now in the database, everyone plays pawn at c3, and by everyone, I mean in the two games in the database. <laughs> So the database will not be useful anymore. Uh, but hey, one of them was 2300. Um, okay, knight at c3, rawr, blunder, says the engine in, in their analysis. Um, pawn at c3 has to be played with tiny bit advantage for black and now big, 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 big advantage for white after knight at c3. But the move here was knight g7 check. I think I mentioned that we had this check right at this moment instead of taking let's see that line and see if the the engine gives moves it only gives king f8 doesn't give more moves after that um well we could play there are two options i mean we can take here still but i'm, I'm curious about this option because we fork we fork and if he takes which is a logical move we fork here and he has to defend the rook, I guess. And well, this is interesting because now suddenly bishop takes his check, but that's not useful in <laughs> any way. <laughs> so I don't know if I achieved anything here actually. <laughs> okay. That was funny. Um I guess 96 is not the best. Anyway, uh, let's see what happened in the game. So bishop takes and now, uh, now the computer analysis shows that this is totally winning for black. And this is good. This is good. And here it says minus 25. And now it says minus 9. Okay. Let's put on the board the move I thought was totally, totally winning. Pong here. I think this is. The, I feel. I mean, I think this feels completely winning for black. I think we have to take because if we move to to any place like this, queen at d2 is checkmate. If we move here after bishop check, queen at d2 is going to be checkmate. Unless we go up right now. If we block. Queen at d2 is checkmate. If we go down, queen at d2 is checkmate. If we go up, then it's 
as bad as going there in the first place. And it is bad. Because still, queen at d2. Queen at d2 can be removed. Ah, no, because of the bishop g4 in the other line. Um, yeah, we're, we're extracted here. This, this cannot be good. This has to be checkmate. Pawn here or bishop here. Uh, what's the best? I think it's funny finding checkmates, but you can tell this is not a great position for that king. Let's say this. And here I assume there's a checkmate, so let's go here. Let's suck a pawn. This is only move. Now probably taking here is good. But I was thinking bishop here. Yeah, and that's checkmate because king here, queen f4, and king up, there's this pawn. So yeah, that king is checkmated. So if that king is checkmated, that means that after dropping a pawn on c3, we have to take it. And if we have to take it, then black continues doing that. And black is full of diagonals. <laughs> Black has the pocket full of diagonals to keep doing this. And we don't really want to get to the fifth rank <laughs> with all these pawns waiting for, for us, no. But again, if we go back, and this is going to be queen d2, or even queen d2 here could be an option, king d1, well, maybe not an option. But just this improves the line. So, yeah, after pawn here, we probably have to take it. Um, there's no safe place. There's no safe place. Probably here already knight c6 is killing and you can pre-move dropping the queen here. I, I assume that wins in every line. Yeah. I think this was completely, completely losing. And it was really, really strange to my eyes that you sacrifice the bishop on d2 to trade queens and then you don't go pawn at c3. I don't know what PKR saw here. Maybe he saw some ghosts or maybe he thought he was improving the line with bishop at g5. I think still pawn at c3 sh should be killing here. Maybe now we can try this. But yeah, queen d2 will, will be there. Maybe now it's not as strong as before, or maybe it is because here again we're being extracted. We don't go to we don't want to go here and allow bishop at f2. Probably I don't know. This this feels checkmate. So we're extracted. Yeah, this looks losing as well. So I think pawn at c3 is still still probably winning here. And uh, he traded first. And again, I think Pong at c3 wins here. And yeah, here it says blunder now. Computer analysis goes from minus 9 to plus 2.6. And it says blunder. Best move was Pong at c3. Again. Yeah. <laughs> we got lucky in this one. <laughs> so now let's stop. <laughs> let's stop criticizing Black for not winning this game. And let's see how how well white won it from this from this point so bishop at d4 strange strangely uh, is not the best move blunder best move was bishop d3 okay i remember suggesting bishop d3 as well but but then for some reason i thought bishop at d4 could could be better i guess it's not and uh, i don't know what the computer would suggest here for black oh yeah i know it says knight c6 so knight c6 was better aha uh -huh, interesting i was thinking bishop at v4 and i guess there's no problem if we just move the king i didn't want to put it here because the bishop still pinned but i guess it's okay and here i had a problem what was the problem on me too I remember I had a problem here, but I can't remember the problem now. Mm. 
never mind. Okay, so this this was a blunder. Yeah, ninety six would have been interesting. I didn't consider it though, and, and it's a very normal move, and it comes with some threats. Because still, white's king is here, <laughs> and black. If, if black opens the, the lines again against the king, the the shelter we built we, with the last two moves can be can be removed maybe. Okay, and now I was thinking, what about this move right now? Was that interesting? I think I mentioned it at some point with this bishop pinned that he could try to distract, but I think it was with the knight already on e4 when I when I said it. Anyway, king takes c3. Yeah, maybe it's nothing here. Nothing special, right? Uh, so pawn e5, lucky, and now knight e4. <laughs> Blunder! Now white is losing. Rawr. Ah. Uh, best move was queen at g7. I didn't even think about it. Queen at g7. So I thought about knight at c4 and I think... I don't know what the engine would think about this move. But I thought there was nothing wrong with it. Ah! Here is the moment where I thought bishop at b4 and I didn't like king e2 because he would ping our knight. The problem is I mistakenly thought he had another bishop in hand and he doesn't. So so there's no bishop at b5 here. Which I remember having thought. Maybe queen a6, but no, there's no queen a6. Okay, so this is perfectly fine for for white I think. Yeah, knight c4 was my my suggestion, I remember that. And queen at g7 is the engine's suggestion, which is not so crazy. I think I mentioned queen at g7 later in the game. Or maybe he... Ah, yeah, after knight at e4, I mentioned, oh, the idea might be knight at f6. Therefore, if queen d8... I think I mentioned queen g7 here followed by knight at f6, if I'm correct. Um, so anyway, knight, knight at e4, and according to the engine now, it takes d4. Was the best move by black, and it says black is winning. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, and we have the line here, we have the line here. It's the line suggested by the engine. So c takes e6, and now it's amazing that that, that black is winning according to the engine. Um, white has two queens in hand, and black has no queens, only a knight and two bishops in hand and three pawns. But this king is so exposed. So let's continue the computer line. Queen a4 makes sense trying to take on d4, but knight c6 defends it. Now knight c7 is really, really, is really this winning for <laughs> for black? Amazing. We can't go here because queen at e8 is checkmate. So we have to go here. And now it gives knight at d5, threatening queen at c... I mean, the queen. Queen at c7 is the threat. And now pawn at c3. Yeah, too many pawns. King d1. And simply bishop at b6, defending c7. And what about rook takes b6? It doesn't give rook takes b6. I'm assuming there's something. Well, actually, queen at c7 is not a big threat. It's just a check. It's not checkmate. Hmm. Wow. And this is perfectly good for perfectly fine for black amazing I'm following the computer line now <laughs> rook ah no the computer line finishes there will we give a rook uh, I guess this or something like that I don't know crazy stuff 
e takes d4, best move. Queen e6, wrong. <laughs> and now from this point on, yeah, I was actually knight d7, yeah. Now, now this this was easy. Okay, here I I would have, if I don't want to resign, I would have gone to d7, at least knight takes e6 is not check, and we have some extra options. But now it's check. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, bishop takes e5, seems normal. Ah, here this was the point, yeah, where I thought there was an easy wing and a not so easy wing, and he went for the not so easy, or at least risky, let's call it risky. Uh, and then suddenly I realized uh, James had two queens in hand, so actually I think what he did is much easier than what I thought. And what was the other one I thought? Uh, ah, d6, pawn at d6, yeah, I remember now. So my idea was pawn at d6 and, and this. Let's say he blocks with, I don't know, bishop, pawn, say pawn. Well, bishop would defend at least some additional squares. And so he has to go here. Here there's mate. And this is going to be mate as well. No matter where he goes, we're going to drop queen with checkmate. So, so yeah, the thing is, if he cannot take it, then we're gonna drop queen here and checkmate anyway. So, so hmm. now I'm thinking maybe my way was easier. Nah, both of them. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> when he took on b7, I said, okay, uh, he takes, he has knight c5, and then I was thinking how to drop the queen without sacrificing this knight, and I realized, oh, there was queen at b5 instead of queen at b7. And only when he dropped this, and the opponent took. No, only only at this moment I thought, oh, we have another queen, an extra queen, and with the extra queen is checkmate. Actually, I think he missed the best checkmate sequence, which is queen at c7 here. But still good because queen at f4, yeah. Uh, so he, this allows queen at c7, and this of course allows queen at d4, at least. I saw this one, but I think there there are many more. This is also checkmate. <laughs> How many checkmates do we, do we have in this position? We need to protect this these two squares, right? So maybe only those two, maybe only those two checkmates. Hmm. Okay, uh, good games, James. So we're now 3-1. And uh, crazy, crazy stuff, crazy this, these two games. Um, I think both of you played crazy <laughs> combative chess. And it, was, it was fun. Yeah, okay, tomorrow is my match at... I play a really strong player. Uh, it's at 10 p.m. I think, and I hope to see you there. Uh, okay, now I'll upload this video and I'll run it at some point. Uh, thanks, guys.